first lord of Castle Rock was a huntsman named Corlos, son of Castor, whose village was being menaced by a lion. After pursuing the lion into its den, he slew the beast and its mate, but spared the cubs he found. This act of mercy pleased the gods so much that they showed him a massive vein of gold within the rock face that would become Castle Rock. It is debatable whether this tale is entirely true, of course. Castor, founder of House Castle, and his descendants would build a mighty fortress into the great stone hill that so far has never fallen by force of arms. However, eventually, the Castellis would fall victim to a mysterious man from the east named Lan the Clever. There are many tales of how Lan managed to oust the Castellis from the rock and immortalize himself and his descendants as kings of the rock. Some say that he convinced the family that their home was haunted or that he infested it with vermin that he had his way with the Castelli daughter and produced golden-haired heirs, that he set a pride alliance on Castelli's sons and took the daughters for himself. Either way, Lan's descendants of House Lannister ruled Castelli Rock from then until the present day, and House Castelli was extinguished during the Age of Heroes. The Rock is no ordinary castle. Although crowned with towers and turrets and watchtowers like any other castle in Westeros, with its stone walls and oaken gates and iron portcullises guarding every means of egress. This ancient fortress is in truth a colossal rock behind the sunset sea, a rock that some say looks like a lion in repose when the sun sets and the shadows fall. The rock itself had been a habitation for men for thousands of years. Before the coming of the first men, it seemed likely that the children of the forest and giants made their homes in the great sea-carved caverns at its base. Bears, lions, wolves and bats have also known to make the rock their lairs, along with countless lesser creatures. Hundreds of mine shafts penetrate the lower parts of the rock, where many veins of red and yellow gold gleam untouched in the stone, even after a millennia of mining. The House Castley were the first to begin to carve halls and chambers from the old mine shafts, and they established a ring fort on the rock's peak from which they could survey their domain while keeping a highly defensible position, allowing them to protect their precious gold mine. The rock has been measured at three times the height of the wall in the far north or the high tower of Old Town. Almost two leagues long from west to east, it is riddled with tunnels and dungeons, storerooms, barracks, halls, stables, stairways, courtyards, balconies and gardens. There is even a godswood of sorts. Though the weirwood that grows there is a queer, twisted thing whose tangled roots have all but filled the cave where it stands, choking out all other growth. The rock even has a port inside it, with docks, warehouses and a shipyard, for the sea has carved a great cave into the western face. Natural gates, deep and wide enough for longships and even some cogs to enter and offload their cargoes. This means to successfully lay siege to Castle Rock, you also had to blockade it from the sea, as ships could easily resupply the castle, making the siege efforts practically useless. The Lion's Mouth, the huge natural cavern that forms the main entrance to the rock, arches 200 feet high from the floor to ceiling. Over the centuries, it has been widened and improved upon, and is now said that 20 horsemen can ride abreast up its broad steps. Castle Rock has never been taken by storm or siege. No castle in the Seven Kingdoms is larger, richer, or better defended. Legends say that Visenya Targaryen, upon seeing it, thanked the gods that King Loren rode forth to face her brother, Aegon, at the Field of Fire. But if he had remained within the rock, even Dragonflame would not have daunted him. Lannisport is a walled city that sits in the shadow of Castle Rock. Lannisport is located along the coast of the Sunset Sea, where the River Road, the Gold Road, and the Ocean Road meet. It is one of the major ports of the Seven Kingdoms, and is the largest settlement in the Westerlands. Lannisport is smaller than King's Landing, or Old Town, but larger than Gold Town and White Harbour, which in comparison are much newer cities. Lannisport is ruled by House Lannister of Lannisport, a branch of House Lannister of the nearby Casterly Rock, the main and ruling branch of the house. Tywin, the Lord of Casterly Rock at the start of the books, includes Shield of Lannisport amongst his titles, which shows the main branch's seniority over its cadet branch. Besides the Lannisters of Lannisport, other distant kin that live in the city are the Lannies, Lanets, and Lentels, many of whom are yellow of hair and are speculated to descend from bastards of both the Lannisters of the Rock and Lannisport. Lannisport is protected by a ring of walls, 
high and strong. The city is renowned for its goldwork and goldsmiths, using the gold from the rock to produce jewellery famous even in the far lands of Essos. They are also known to produce spiced honey wine. Like King's Landing, Lannisport has a higher quality of brothels, both due to its wealth and rich trading vessels that make port. Merchants from Lannisport often trade with their counterparts in the free cities, meaning Lannisport is a gateway for exotic goods on the west coast of Westeros. Due to its size, House Lannister anchors most of its fleet in Lannisport's harbour with a large collection of pleasure vessels taking up the rest of the space. According to some sources, a lesser branch of House Lannister of Casterly Rock developed a village a mile from Casterly Rock into first a town and then a city. Many have questioned why this may be, as the rock has ample space. It is speculated that a lesser branch living in the shadow of the Lannisters of the Rock wanted to strike out and build their own fortune. The fertile vicinity had a natural harbour with abundant fish. While the Lannisters of Lannisport fortified the city, the Lannisters of Casterly Rock became the kings of the rock and the Lannisters of Lannisport would forever live in the shadow of them. By the time of the coming of the Andals, the only city in Westeros larger than Lannisport was Old Town. Due to the city's proximity to the Iron Islands, wealthy Lannisport has often been a target for their attacks, being burned at least three times and raised two dozen times over the centuries. After being mutilated by Shrike, Lea Lannister was sent from the Iron Islands back to Lannisport which led to years of warfare between the Ironborn and the Westermen. Ironborn sailors have also traded Lannisport during more peaceful times, but even to this day are still treated with disdain and suspicion 